Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be creating a really cool hand-painted tileable uh, slab material and we can be putting this on temple floors um, and in all kinds of places. Um, now if you've never done any hand painted stuff before I'd really suggest you check out the introduction to hand painted materials video um, it's going to be a, a much nicer introduction to a lot of these techniques and I'm going to be explaining what we're doing in a little bit more detail there um, but I will be going over a lot of the things that were spoken about here as well so if you're familiar with Photoshop if you're familiar with graphics tablets feel free just to jump in I'm going to be linking the uh, the canvas that we've got here uh, as a PSD in the description below so feel free just to download that um, and kind of just start painting along. Now the first step to any hand painted material is to make uh, kind of a shape outline and this is certainly how I like to work. If you can't or if you're not particularly good at drawing um, I'd always recommend creating some outlines first. These do not have to be particularly neat these do not have to be particularly complete um, but they certainly have to show you kind of a, an idea of what that material is going to be. Now the first thing I want to do is create uh, my kind of my first shape. I'm going to create a square in the middle here. Now whenever we're creating tileable materials we need to use offset. And an offset is a filter um, that exists in Photoshop. It's found in filter, other and offset. We'll go over how to use this in a second, but the most important thing to consider whilst we do this is just to stay away from the edges. Because offset is going to take whatever we've got in the center here and it's going to put it into these corners so that we can draw again into the center. Uh, and this just helps us make sure that the material is nice and tileable. It's going to tile from left to right and from top to bottom. Um, and it's not really going to take us a lot of effort to do this. So let's start painting. Now I'm in my outline layer. My outline layer is where I'm going to put all of the, the shape outlines. And the first thing I want to do is draw a big old kind of square shape here. Now I'm going to take my time here. I'm going to kind of make this as as good as I can. I'm not a particularly gifted artist, as I'm sure you're already aware. And if you exist in my sessions as a student, then this will be again abundantly obvious. And I definitely, definitely cannot draw. It took me a long time to teach myself how to do hand painted materials. So hopefully, um, what we're going to be looking at here is going to be useful for you and hopefully you won't have to struggle quite as much as I did to kind of work out what, what the secrets are so to speak. So I've got my first shape here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some detail just uh, around this. Uh, before I kind of continue on, what I do want to do is I just want to move this so it's more centralized. Um, don't be afraid to move these materials using the, the, the marquee tool and the move tool or certainly the, the outlines. This isn't cheating, um, I'm just not particularly good at drawing so for me getting it in the right place can be a bit tricky but once it's in the right place we'll be golden. I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of like some smaller blocks just around here and then we're going to offset and we're going to start painting uh, uh, again and hopefully this will become really obvious what we're going to do. Now I'm just going to draw, I'm going to start by making sure I've got my paint. I'm going to start just by painting in the kind of the halfway line here between these two bricks and again you can see I'm just rounding those edges and I'm going to continue now painting the right brick as I do this and I'm going to curve this corner here and curve the bottom corner and just complete this I'm going to do the same over here it doesn't matter if they're not the same size when we used to create stone tablets they were not necessarily always the same size as they were all created by hand and actually by doing this it kind of creates a more authentic feeling material um, just watch until the end if you don't believe me I'm going to do the same over here and again so I'm just going to kind of curve those corners and I'm going to just again curve the corners at the bottom doesn't matter if they're not perfect again this kind of lack of neatness, as I mentioned in my previous video, um, one of the things that holds a lot of people back when they start with this is they want things to look perfect first. And uh, whenever we do hand painted materials at college, we kind of we have a, a an agreement with the students, uh, and we tell them all the same thing, and that is that this material is going to look really shit um, until it doesn't. Uh, and this, generally speaking, is the same uh, with all artwork. Um, if you saw what some of the best artists start with in terms of sketches in terms of hand painted kind of stuff like that um, you would really be surprised at the quality of it um, the finished product obviously what you see as a gamer and what you see uh, as a developer are two massively 
different things, but certainly the end product is very impressive. Uh, but how they get there tends to be overlooked massively. Um, certainly young people tend to see the end product, but they don't necessarily see the work that goes involved in creating that end product. So it's really important that we, 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 we thunder through, even if we're not particularly happy with the starting of it. Um, you know, for instance, uh, this doesn't come all the way over. I'm not going to worry about it. We'll worry about it later. And same thing here. This doesn't come all the way over. Same thing here. So I'm not I'm not looking for perfection yet. The time for perfection will come, um, but right at the end, when we're adding in lots of these really cool details, like splits and cuts and chipped edges, that's when we can add in the perfection. But until then, let's just draw some shapes and have a little bit of fun. After all, that is what games development is about. So this is going to be um, my basic shape. And what I am going to do is I'm just going to draw some smaller squares here just in the corner just to make it a little bit more difficult for myself after we offset. These are optional, you don't have to do these but I just kind of like changing up some of the details as we go. I just think this kind of makes it look a little bit kind of uh, more interesting, a little bit more organic and again a little bit less boring. Just going to kind of paint these in. And again don't worry if they're a little bit messy, it's absolutely fine. You'll notice that I'm painting right into the corners here. I'm not kind of leaving loads of gaps, I'm making sure they're nice and close. What I am doing, you'll notice, however, is I'm not um, just kind of uh, drawing uh, boxes underneath shapes. And what I mean by that, so I'm not just doing this. Um, if I did this, it would make it look like this stone. When we add the shadows in, it would make it look that this one was underneath this one. So it's really important that we add in the boundary points for each of these stones. So I'm not actually going to have a stone there, um, but you kind of, you kind of, you get the point. You can see what we're doing here. Um, and I'm going to get carried away now. I can see it. I'm going to add another little small stone here, like so. And this is the worst thing about hand painted materials: is that you, uh, you end up finding you're having so much fun, kind of adding in a lot of these outlines. That you end up wanting to kind of create these massively illustrious. Uh, designs that I can tell that in this particular video tutorial um, I'm going to have more trouble than you are trying to restrain myself, trying not to go um, too complex. Um, especially if you've got any kind of uh, OCD and you want everything to be the same size, you are going to be here for days uh, trying to achieve that. Um, also, I want another one over here. I'm going to have a slightly larger brick here. And this, this one here will complete um, the outlines uh, and we can start uh, offsetting. I promise I'm not going to spend too much time uh, adding in loads of <laughs> loads of detail. Uh, I will. I promise I will stop at some point and show you offset. Um, and I'm sure that you'll all dislike the video if I don't. So I've kind of got to show you offset, really. Uh, otherwise, your materials will look crap and they'll never look better. Um, I'm just going to continue this here. I'm trying to do this a little bit quicker, so you're not staring here looking at me uh, like an idiot. Just trying to quickly rush through all of this stuff like so. So you can kind of see how um, we can create some pretty interesting looking details. We can, just before we offset, we can kind of touch some of these up just to really refine them. It's probably easier to touch them up now um, than it will be later on. So if you make sure that we kind of, they're, they're really obvious shapes. And that's really it. We just need to make sure that these shapes are obvious at this stage. If they're not obvious it becomes quite hard to add shadows later. So you'll notice that I'm going over some of these borders um, and where I've got gaps I'm just trying to fill these in with with shading. I'm not kind of going too crazy I'm just filling them in. Okay so where I've got kind of like really sketchy edges here I'm just going to go over those and just refine them. Like so. So where I've got little gaps, I'm just going to shade those in. I'm not going to be pressing too hard. I'm just going to kind of be colouring them in just so that they don't look quite as obvious. And we've got another one up here that I'm just going to kind of just finish off. Okay, uh, excellent. So this is um, kind of our basic, um, our basic shape or our basic selection of shapes. Um, just noticing as I do this, I just want to refine that central stone real quick. Like so. Okay, awesome. I promise I'm going to stop now. I'm going to stop now and I'm going to show you offset. Now, in order to make this tile, we have to use a tool called offset. And I've already shown you where it is, um, but let's have a look at how it works. So we come to filter and we come to other and we come to offset. 
what we're looking for is we're looking for creating um, the horizontal and vertical size. We want to be half the width and the height of the canvas size as a whole. Um, now what this means is, is, is we have to have this at 256 by 256 because the whole canvas is 512 by 512. Now if you had a 1024 by 1024 canvas the horizontal and vertical numbers would have to be half the width and height um, so again it would be 512 uh, by 512 and although this kind of uh, it comes across as a little bit confusing at times um, it does eventually begin to make sense. Um, once we're happy with this we can just click OK and as we're painting, it's very important that we we toggle between these uh, these two views. Now this is the offset view, and if we press Control Alt and F, this is the original view. And as we paint, we're going to be switching between these two views because we're going to be using this view here to fill in the gap, and we're using this view here to tidy up any of the edges um, that we end up kind of creating that, that don't look cool or don't look good. So we're going to start here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting in. Um, let's have a look here. I'm going to start by putting in a nice big stone right in the middle here. I kind of want to join up all of these if I can. It doesn't matter if they're not perfectly straight. I'm not particularly worried about it being massively straight. Again, it doesn't have to be neat. We just have to get the this stuff done for now. And as I finish this one, again I'm just going to refine it. Once I'm done here, I'm just going to switch back to show you what we end up with, what we end up. So if I press control and F again, you can kind of see how we've kind of created these sections here. Okay, so hopefully it becomes really obvious what offset is uh, is doing here. Okay, awesome. So now I'm going to put in some more of these little bricks. I've got so halfway halfway line here. I'm just going to kind of maybe plan these out a little bit. So that is going to be a long, thin one, and we're going to have another one here. So now, once I've planned those out, I'm just going to draw over the top of this with a little bit more pressure on the pen. And just finalize these outlines, like so. And the same thing over here, so I'm just going to finalize those outlines. And we're going to do the same up here. Now, you can kind of see the pattern that this is creating. So we've got one that's going this way, we've got one stone that's going this way. Like so. And we've got another one that's going this way. So that's what we're going to try and sort of replicate here. And then I've got two, I say two, I put in my halfway point, and I've got two slightly smaller squares here. So all we're doing when we do this is we're just replicating the patterns here. Just going over some of these just to really bring out any of those edges that look a little bit soft. And again here I'm just going to kind of put in the halfway point. Just try and plan this a little bit. That seems to be where the texture is going. This would just be because I, I can't draw a straight line to save my life, so that's why we've kind of got this skew here. And this is fine. This is like it's not going to change the material at all. Um, it still end up looking badass. And you notice I'm staying well away from the edge. I got a bit close here, but I'm not going over the edge, so I'm fine. Um, we can do the same thing over here. So I'm going to come across here, come all the way across over to here. And I'm really just making shapes at this point. Okay, um, we, we're trying to replicate the pattern if we can. We don't have to. Um, you can be completely random with this, and you will end up again with a really awesome-looking uh, material. Um, but just for the purposes of this, I'm trying to replicate this pattern, and this helps kind of keep things a little bit, a little bit quicker. Again, don't be afraid to kind of plan these things out, and then kind of go over the top with more purposeful strokes. then this will work. This will work very well. Okay. We could probably put in another one over here like this. So we're gonna start off with something that's perhaps a bit more horizontal. Try and get this close. And then we're gonna have underneath this something that's more 
going to try and get that a bit closer. I generally say never con never undo anything. If you end up with a messy line, keep it. But um, sometimes you can just be so unhappy with the line where you've rushed it or you've tried to put it in place um, that uh, you have to undo it in order to get that that quality back. So I'm just going to. I've got another one over here that I'm going to be doing. So again, I'm just going to plan this. And the middle one's going to be roughly here, and then I'm going to have my halfway points here, and it's going to kind of come across like this. So I can kind of paint in now those 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 slabs with a little bit more, again, purpose. And 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 you'll notice I'm kind of just drawing over the top of these lines. And once we're done, you don't really notice that they're there. So really, don't be afraid to plan these things out. Um, it's super important that we get. Uh, some awesome looking shapes here. I'm going perhaps a little bit faster than I would normally, um, just so that we can kind of I can guide you through the entire process. A lot of the tutorials already exist on these kinds of topics. They 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 give you the outline and then they say, okay, we'll see you in video two, um, and then you come back to video two and they've kind of already completed the texture and they're just expecting you to work out how they've done it. Um, I promise I'm not going to do that. We are going to go through the whole stage from start to finish. Um, so uh, I'm just filling in the gaps here. Before I offset again and fill in any any more space, so any gaps that I've got between the stones, we're just shading those in. Um, this just ends up creating a really nice join between a lot of these a lot of these rocks. So this is going to look really awesome when it's done. But you can kind of see um, the pattern that we're creating here. Um, and I'm just going to press Control on F again, and we're going to go back to this particular view. Now you can see here um, where we've got some of these options, we've got some of these areas that are not finished. All we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of round off the top here and I'm going to I'm going to go kind of close to the edge but I'm not going to go actually to the edge. And we do the same thing here, I'm just going to round off the edge. When we control offset again we'll be able to do the other ends of this. So this is just going to allow us to see where they are more than anything. So I'm going to really make them obvious. Um, one thing I've seen uh, some of my colleagues do as well is in order to make it obvious they'll put like a little X on on the areas that they're interested in, so this one, this one, this one, or this one are the kind of the, the main focuses. And then when they do that, Control and F, you can kind of see that they become apparent. We can see them here. Um, so that that is that is essentially what we'll end up recreating. So these will tile over here, so we can just create that a little bit more detail. And this one will eventually tile down here. So again, we can just darken the edge here without going into too much detail. And then we can get rid of those X's once we're happy. Um, with the offset itself. I'm just getting rid of these. Like so, and we switch back to the pen. Um and, and this is essentially how we create our our outlines. Now the next step after this is to add some shadows and highlights. And we're gonna be doing this uh, in video two, so I hope that this uh, this little outline tutorial um, was useful to you. Uh, one thing you can do uh, is just make sure you're going over these, really bring out the rocks really bring out the shapes and this is going to help you uh, in the next video with your highlights and shadows. I hope this has been useful. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.